All right, are you are you gonna be in the video or not? Hey folks, today we're doing a Billy Strings video. It's a request that I get all the time. So I'm selling out, baby. I'm doing some more user requests. Dust in a Baggie is a Billy Strings tune that he does at every single one of his live shows. I'm working off the performance that he did for our vinyl, which is filmed really well. You can see his hands, which makes it a great piece of source material if you want to go look at Billy's performance and see what he's doing with his fingers or how he's shifting or any of those specific details. You can go and you can check that yourself too. So let's get into some scale shapes and techniques that we should have under our belt before we get going. So Billy uses a lot of different things to play this break, and in a performance setting, it seems really complicated and unattainable, but on a fundamental level, just to understand what he's using, this is all actually very attainable. This is not too hard to understand. But the first thing we need is a bone structure. We need to see how he's looking at the fretboard, how he's looking at the neck, and how he's mapping things out. For that, of course, we're gonna use the G major and minor pentatonic. So I'm gonna give you a shape for each one of those scales. Here we go. So when Billy moves up the neck, he greatly favors G chord tones. So let's look at some G triads that will greatly help us later. To descend the neck, Billy's taking advantage of some thirds in the G mixolydian scale. So let's take a look at that real quick. And lastly, Billy likes to use some drones. They're a great way to give yourself time to think. So here's an example of what he might do over a D chord. As always, listen to the break again and see if you can spot everything we just went over. Cool, so now let's do a breakdown and look for all those things specifically, maybe give you some performance ideas so you can get this break under your fingers faster. All right, so I'm looking at the first page of the break here. If you know anything about the anatomy of a bluegrass break, normally they start with a little kickoff. You get a phrase like this. Or, Billy kind of skips that, we don't really get that. We get these two notes, and then that starts him into this long chromatic descending phrase. And that really feels like a speed exercise. It's almost like Billy started with a, a warm up just to get his fingers going. Uh, when he hits that low G note, just gives us a G run. He does it over a C chord, which is kind of funky, but sometimes when you're going at this kind of speed, yeah, you know, you drop some funky things, maybe not everything works out perfectly. He gives us kind of a backstepping phrase here. Right, I, I guess you'd call that a, a front stepping phrase in this case. Moving on to the next line. Here we have something that um, I've talked about before, and normally I say that this doesn't work, but Billy's actually demonstrating a great way to use this. In some of my videos, I've talked about how we don't really want to use the fourth degree of the scale of the one chord, which is exactly what Billy's doing here. Why it works is because he's always putting it on an unstressed beat. He's always putting it on the ands in between the main beat. So we have one and, two and, three and, four and. So both of the times we've got a C, they happened on an and, and it feels like they're just transitioning to a stronger chord tone. Cool, let's look at the next measure after that. We got minor third to major third. This is the kind of stuff that we expect. It's a mixture of the major and minor pentatonic, if you're thinking that way, wonderful. We get a major pentatonic phrase after that. Just like I talked about with the drones, Billy's taking up some time. Right here, we're using a little bit of a G triad as we move into the next line. This is part of a low G chord. 
and he slides up into another low G chord. This would be a G7 chord, right? There's a G chord, it's like a little D shape. Here's the G7 version. So Billy is getting up the neck just by thinking of all the different triad shapes that he could find. Sounds like this. Once again, this is minor to major third, just like we saw previously. This whole phrase is a very Billy Strings phrase. Um, it's something that you're going to have to count very carefully if you want to get up to speed. If we went to the next line. Really what's happening here is the chord is changing from G to C, and Billy's taking advantage of some interesting stuff here. As he plays this, when it's over the G chord, we get a minor third to a major third, which works out lovely. But then right here, we have a G and an E, and then this would be a G and a B flat. So they kind of imply a C7. It's a smart maneuver to imply C7 that way. When he slides it up, this is what I talked about where he's using the thirds of the G mixolydian scale really to get down. And all that means is that it's a G scale with a flat at seven. So as I go down, it's like I went from a G to an F chord. From there, I'm moving to a G chord, to an F chord, right? G, F. And from here, I'm moving to a C chord. Here, he plays a line. And he does that three times in a row, which is a little awkward, but once again, he's moving so fast and we're filling that time and we're making all of this come out even. And it makes a lot more sense when you're moving at that speed. And it's a very Billy thing to uh, make things line up that way using a phrase like this. And so with a standard G run and uh, we're out, that's it. All right, wonderful. Here's the break at half speed and at 95% speed, which is also how fast I played it in the beginning. Um, if you can play it with me at 95%, then you're probably ready to start trying it at the original tempo uh, just with the video of Billy. But good luck. <laughs> Really though, good luck getting this one up to speed. What happens to me is when I start playing that fast, I wanna play like myself. I wanna use my own tricks and ideas to come up with a solution for something that fast. And so to sound like another player is very difficult. And I'm sure you'll find the exact same thing. Trying to sort of walk and move exactly like another person is just impossible. But anyway, here's the breaks, enjoy. All right, if you like taking a lesson from the biggest, baddest Billy Goat in the barnyard, as always, there's a couple things you can do. Please scroll down, leave me a comment, give this video a like, subscribe to this channel if you want to see more of these breakdowns. Uh, beyond that, you can check out my website, LessonsWithMarcel.com. I have tons of free tabs available there, including the tab for this video, as well as a bunch of arrangements that I've made myself that I sell there. You can also sign up for Skype lessons, and I have a blog that has a bunch of bluegrass and jazz-related material. And last but not least, I do run an Instagram account called Jazz and Grass, where we post a new guitar lick every single day of the week, including Saturday, and we do a podcast every other Sunday. Um, it's a really good time, so please check that stuff out. But yeah, I think that's all I got. So I'll see you next Wednesday for another YouTube video. Ring them bells at the crossroads Through the valley below My heart love was running from town That midnight train